We're here at the uh, Goods of Food and Wine Show in Sydney and I'm with my friend Tom from The Red Cow and we're going to try some cheeses today and uh, talk about some wine and cheese and how they go together. But um, Tom, maybe tell us a bit about um, Swiss cheese and, and, and how you came about uh, getting involved in, in cheese in Australia. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me here. Um, I'm here particularly with uh, Gruyere this year. So this, this cheese in the middle, we'll talk a bit more later. But in general, the red cow is about artisan cheese from Switzerland. We mainly focus about uh, raw milk cheese from uh, various, mainly smaller producers in Switzerland with the freshest possible milk, and then bring that to uh, the Australian uh, people, basically. Yeah, right, great. And so um, the three different cheeses here today, um, yeah, let's let's talk about them. Yeah, definitely. Well, Switzerland is is very well renowned for their uh, cow's milk cheeses in the raw milk and pasteurized yep. sector. So, unsurprisingly, I brought uh, three uh, cow's milk cheeses. Yep. They're all unpasteurized. Um, however, they're all quite different. So, uh, I think we're going to see that later when we're going to taste it. That they all bring their different aspects to the table. Yep. And uh, they they do make it a quite interesting uh, variety, really. Okay, great. And so the first one that we have here today? Yeah, so I mean, I was talking about Gruyere, so I thought we could probably start with this one here in the middle. Yep. So Gruyere is quite a well-known uh, cheese. Uh, a lot of people, I think it's only for cooking, yep. uh, because a lot of re recipes require Gruyere in it. It's a fantastic melting cheese and it, it's brilliant in a lot of dishes. However, there's, there's also, uh, when you look into a bit more matured Gruyere's, they're fantastic just as a table cheese to eat on itself and yep. they match really beautifully, I think, with with uh, some uh, Australian wines as well. Okay, so what kind of wines normally would we have with uh, this style of cheese? It, it's really interesting you say that because it's not really a set rule book as, as far as I can see it. Yeah. Um, maybe you can enlighten me a bit more what you think, but for the Gruyere, generally it starts off with a fairly, t fairly tame white wine, probably, yeah. and goes all the way to maybe a Pinot Noir. It depends on the maturation and the particular yep. age that Gruyere is on. The one we're talking here is the Gruyere Reserve, um, which is, uh, this particular one is 12 months matured. So it's got a slight graininess, um, it's a bit denser, a bit saltier, so it can stand up to something slightly stronger. Yep. Um, I don't know, do you, do you have any general tips so in regards I, to food so and I, wine I matching? I think with, with food and um, wine matching in general, basically we like to try to complement the flavours. Um, so, for example, when we have a, a dessert, something sweet, we want a sweeter wine. When we have something that is sort of citrus, we like to complement that with a bit of acidity in the wine. Um, and so that's the kind of general rule, except when uh, we have something that is bitterness. So if we have bitter, we don't want to have a, a high tannin kind of wine that goes with it because that will actually compound those those mm. flavors and, and make yeah. it really hard on the palate. So I don't know, we've got we've got a, a, a few wines here today. So I thought maybe we would try the Riesling um, with, with the first cheese. Yeah, sounds um, great. Okay. So the, the Riesling we have here is from Hughes and Hughes in uh, Tasmania. So uh, I'll pour the wine if yeah, you want to. I'll cut some cheese yeah. and uh, happy days. And of course, you have your uh, Swiss knife uh, to go Absolutely. with your Swiss yeah. Swiss cheese. You have to. <laughs> this, uh, I'll give you the, this one. Awesome. All right. Just a, a small tasting for uh, for the morning. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so. Yeah, the cheese itself, as I said, it's 12 months matured. Yep. It's from the French-speaking part in Switzerland. And you can sense a slight graininess in there. That's basically like the calcium crystals okay. that uh, develop over time. So you won't see that in a younger Gruyere. So minimum age for a Gruyere is six months. Um, you won't really see those crystals in there. Yep. They start to come about from about 10 months and uh, continue to develop. So a lot of people like that's like crunchiness in there. And obviously it's, it's, it, it continues to sort of develop the salt content or the, the strength yep. of the cheese yep. as well. Yeah. Yeah. The texture is, yeah, it's, it will go well with this wine, I'm sure. Mm. This, this Riesling from Tasmania, so it's cooler climate Riesling. Um, yeah, you got that, that sharpness under the acidity 
that sort of cuts through with it goes really nicely with this cheese. I think it works fantastically well with this one. Mm -hmm. It's a really good match. Yeah, it's just it just really balances well with this this, um, <coughs> this wine. Just nice and easy to drink. It's um, you know some reasons can be quite sweet, yeah. um, and or they could be quite acidic. I mean, naturally they are more acidic wine, but um, this isn't a this is a dry raising so it's not too sweet although having having a bit of sweetness would still exactly, work with yeah. the bitiness from yep. from this so um yeah yeah i agree that's a beautiful match yeah yep. so <clears throat> let's um let's start talking about maybe the, the next cheese yeah that i think that's the next one we're gonna look at this one here which is the le maréchal which is uh, French for the blacksmith, basically. Yep. And it's a newer cheese. I mean, Gruyere has been around since the 1200s, something. Um, this one was developed in the 90s. Right. Uh, by a cheesemaker that used to produce Gruyere before. Yep. And he just wanted to make his own. Yep. And he developed this cheese, the Le Maréchal, uh, also in the French-speaking region of uh, Switzerland. Yep. And uh, he named it after his great-grandfather, Emile who was a blacksmith, hence the name Le Maréchal, the blacksmith. Okay. And what it does, it's, uh, as I said, it's a cow's milk cheese. It's unpasteurized, so made from fresh raw milk. He's got 14 dairy farmers that he gets their milk from every day, twice a day. And uh, within 10 hours, the milk is actually processed and made into cheese. So it's the, wow. the freshest possible yeah, right. milk you can use. And you can see the darker rind. So the cheese is then washed and wrapped in a herb solution over the time, so matured for about uh, six to 10 months, depending. Yep. And it's, so it's got a, a bit, it's, it's a smooth, sort of mild to medium strength taste initially, but then with the herbal aspect, so it makes it, yeah, that herbaceous um, texture and feel to it that, that you'll get from uh, tasting this cheese. Yep, okay. I'm curious to um, try this with the Riesling, even though that's not, mm -hmm. um, what we we're going to pair with it eventually, but um, yeah, absolutely. I think um, <clears throat> I don't. Know, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm curious about these herbs and the, the herbs so are really nice, and it's it's most you know in Switzerland you never really eat the rinds of a hard cheese. So yeah, a lot of people always ask me that. Yeah, um, it's not really even though they're treated with herbs or other things. Um, it's more to infuse the cheese in the inside right. over the time, yep. rather than having something special on the rind that you should bite into. Yep. The rind is the protection for a hard cheese, so. Great, okay. It's good to know, I've always known, like, is it rude to cut mm. it off and throw it away, or is it? General rule, that somebody once told me, is a really nice rule, is like, if the cheese is like the size of your palm or smaller, yep. you can eat the rind. If the cheese is like bigger than the size of your palm, Probably not eat the rind. Yeah, just a rough rule. It doesn't always hold up. But so this is a much stronger flavor. <clears throat> um, a little bit, a little bit softer, is it? Or the, the yeah, it's softer. Not, yeah. It's definitely softer in terms of the texture than the Gruyere is. The flavor, however, is 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 more broad, I think, and goes as I said in that herbaceous sort of <clears throat> side with these beautiful yeah. uh, organic herbs that put yeah. on. It goes, it goes reasonably well with the reasoning. It's, it's not off-putting but um i really would like to try it with uh this semillon savion blanc that we have here from yeah, the sure. river mm -hmm. so uh we'll quickly pour this one out so this wine in particular has um a bit more of the, a smokiness to it which i think will kind of a bit of the oaky oaky smokiness that's you can smell on the cheese. nose it's, it's, it's actually it's quite herbaceous itself, the, it the is, wine. Yeah, so, yeah, it's interesting. It's a different aspect, herbaceous, really, but yeah, but it it's, it does comes out on the nose really well. It, yeah. yeah, so I think that might complement the mm -hmm. the herbs that are in this cheese. And thank you. Do another piece. You also smell that the barnyard basically on it quite quite nicely, which yeah. I think is always a nice aspect. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that's just beautiful. Like to me, that just really lifts the flavors, the the aromatics from both the cheese and the wine. 
complement each other there. You there's have, a lot going on. There's right? a lot going but, on. But, but it's nice. It's, yeah. it's, it's really something you can go back to again. You have a bit of cheese, you have a sip of the wine. Like you discover new aspects really that you haven't really sensed before, I think. Yeah, it's, it, it might be not everyone's tasting because it is quite a, a powerful um, flavor, but I really enjoy that because I think that, yeah, you're getting this herbiness, this kind of, it, it's a bit flinty kind of, heatiness yep. that's coming through and it's uh lifting the cheese quite quite nicely it does yeah, and that's the thing does. about wine in general is that um if you if you match the wines well with the right food it, it really changes uh, the overall you know sensation that you're getting in your mouth and the different flavors you know I'll, I'll, this wine by itself will taste completely different than you know when we have it with the absolutely cheese, so. yeah yep i agree <clears throat> beautiful it's really and um, i don't know can you also second that that you know consumers should just try a few different matches and and see what it, because <clears throat> to some degree it also comes down yeah. to personal taste i guess definitely and i think this is the thing everyone tastes differently so we have different uh sensations in our mouths that we taste things we obviously have different preferences ourselves or what we like but we yeah. actually what you're tasting is actually different to what i'm tasting and so it is just a case of getting out there and trying different things because at the end of the day what's the worst that can happen if you have the wrong the wrong wine with the wrong cheese well you know we're still having a nice day drinking wine and eating cheese yeah, yeah exactly. but unless you try different combinations and different matches yeah. you know you're just not gonna sometimes you get really surprised and it's it's interesting like um you know this uh next cheese for example <coughs> from what you told me before, has, has a bit of an interesting uh, story and, and how it relates with wine, so. Yeah, I mean, this cheese here is called uh, Mont Vully Noir. Uh, Mont is mountain, Vully is the name of that mountain, so Mount Vully Noir is black. Uh, yeah. You can see it from the rind. So Mount Vully Black. Um, the Mount Vully or Mont Vully is a, a little mountain right on the border between the German and French speaking Switzerland. Right. Uh, really, literally right on that border. Yeah, so right. if you walk one side down the mountain, you get into the German speaking side. The yep. other side is French speaking. Yep. So all the people are basically bilingual there. Okay. Uh, it's really uh, an awesome, it's a very pretty area as well. But um, the other aspect of the mountain is that all around the mountain, they grow Pinot Noir grapes. Right. So guess what it's washed in? A Pinot Noir, well, obviously. It looks like it, yeah. <laughs> um, you can't really see that the black rind is something they put on later to distinguish the cheese. Right, okay. So underneath the black, uh, yeah. you, you'll see a reddish rind. Yeah. That's its original rind. Yeah. So that's the wash underneath there. Yep. That uh, comes from the Pinot Noir. Um, the black here refers to the more aged version of this cheese. Okay. So there's a rouge, a red, uh, which is the, the normal Vully cheese yep which is uh about three to six months matured yep and then the black version is the more mature the reserve version of that cheese with uh, 10 to 12 months maturation so when you mature a cheese like this more it just comes out a bit more it it really gets you a bit more of that intense flavor that comes from the washing because when you mature you're not just going to stick it in a cool room you're actually going to treat it continuously with whatever you wash it in. So in this case, the Pinot Noir and salt right. brine. Yep. So you continue to wash it. So that means that that flavor continues to go into the cheese and, and gives you a more intense uh, yep. flavor in the end. Yep. Shall we try it? Well, naturally, yeah, let's definitely try it. Naturally, we have a, a Pinot Noir, um, which you actually found here at the show. Um, yeah, that was an interesting <clears throat> discovery. So this is a, a, a blend of a Pinot Noir and Shiraz. Um, and so, uh, Larita Estate uh, in in the Canberra district. So again, it's it's a cooler climate uh, region. So um, this this would be quite interesting because it's. Uh, I've never come across uh, this particular blend before. It's 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 really interesting to pair yeah. Pinot Noir with Shiraz. I know what do you think? So, well, let's let's give it a try. I'll just finish and, mine. And. Um, Thank you. So I think you look at that color as well. Like it's, it's um, you can definitely tell. So Shiraz, it's sorry, the, the Shiraz is, is more of a, um, a fuller bodied yep. um, wine, whereas a Pinot Noir is, is more of a lighter to medium bodied wine. But it's quite on the, it's, on the it's, opposite it's, ends. Uh, yeah, really, exactly. Right? So yeah, yeah. You can, it's just a really interesting blend. 
And so, again, there's that kind of like that the oakiness you can smell on the nose there from the Shiraz. Yep. Um, so I'm, I'm really keen. Let's try this this uh, this cheese and, and definitely give you this nice little oh. cut here. The wine front by itself is just. <clears throat> It's yeah. interesting. It starts off quite light, and then it, it sort of the chiras element comes in. It a does, bit later. doesn't it? You, you're getting you're getting the, the pinot right there at the front, where you get the, mm -hmm. the fruit is quite fruit driven, but then the length kicks in, and you're getting more of the body that comes through yeah. with the shiraz there. So this yeah, is I agree. a it's very interesting. So we're gonna try that with this cheese. I mean, I can tell straight away from breaking it. This it's it's a it's a heavier cheese, is it? It's a bit, yeah. bit... Yeah, it's crumblier. You can definitely see that. So that's always a good sign of what you just said. It's like break the cheese in half, see how it feels in your hand, you know, even squash it a bit and yeah. then smell it a bit and, and put it in your mouth. Oh. I think I think this is my favorite one because, again, just like the wine, you have a few different elements of, of flavors mm -hmm. going on in your mouth there. And it, it is taking your, your palate on, on different different places. And then yep. we try that with the wine. It matches perfectly. It, you get this sort of silkiness coating of the of the wine in your mouth and then you're, you're eating the cheese and it's just, oh. This works really <clears throat> well. I mean, naturally, if this was uh, washed with Pinot Noir, then you, you want to try and complement those flavors and, and, and drink it with Pinot Noir. But adding that sort of little bit of a twist with the Shiraz okay. there, yeah, and, okay. uh, it actually adds a, a bit more of a, uh, yeah. And I mean, there's no, there's no rule, right? I mean, if, if it works, it works, I guess. And if it works for you, it works. So, you know, just because it is washed in Pinot Noir, of course, that's the obvious to match you yep. think. Um, yep. But there's other options, of course, as well. Yeah. This works really well, yeah. Oh, so great. So thank you very much for uh, bringing these cheeses along. Yeah, thanks for having me. And um, obviously, uh, we've been here today at the show uh, in Sydney. You've, we've got the uh, the Brisbane show coming up, so you'll you'll yep. be there again. Absolutely, yeah, Brisbane. come see me. We're there with Gruyere, so we'll showcase <coughs> three different Gruyere, so you can actually see what time does to a wonderful raw milk cheese. Yep. Um, and for anything else, yeah, check us out on the a website, theredcow.com.au. Yep. Theredcow.com.au. All right, Tom. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Thanks Cheers. for having me. Cheers.